Pope Pentecostal Church here in Platte City on our live feed. Uh, this uh, will be our last live feed from our house. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, Thank you, Lord. I pray that no one ever has to be locked down like that for any length of time. We, uh, but we are grateful for God's healing virtue and yes. his grace and mercy. And we want to pray for those that are still sick with the uh, COVID and uh, that God would touch them and heal them and Amen. get past this stuff and get past the mask and all that other junk and get it out there and enjoy the, the God-given uh, beauty and, and splendor of this wonderful earth. Amen. 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 And uh, get out and visit one another. I, I am, for one, grateful that uh, I have not been uh, incarcerated for any length of time. I think I'd have gone stir crazy. Amen. Uh, <laughs> So, anyway, God is good to us, and we are looking forward to meeting everybody face-to-face -face again uh, this week in our uh, normal church services, and we'll be back together having service on Wednesday at the clubhouse and, and back on Sunday uh, at Shiloh, and we are grateful for that. Amen? Amen. We're going to go ahead and get right into the Word of God. We're going to pray first and ask God's blessing over this service and over all that we're doing and that God would touch and heal as only he can do those that need healing. We still have those that are sick, and we have some that were injured and, and are praying for healings in their lives. And God, we pray right now yeah. for your glory and honor in your mighty name, which is Jesus. Awesome God. Lord, there is no God like you who keeps his promises, that te he teaches us and shows us that you are the healer of body, soul, and spirit, Lord. And we pray right now in your glorious and wonderful name that you touch and heal as only you can do. Lord, have your perfect work in this service. Help us to hear and know and understand what thus saith the word of the Lord. Let me give you the glory, and everybody said in Jesus' name. Turn, if you would, in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning with verse 18. We are grateful for the word of God. Amen? Amen. Chapter 1, verse 18 of 2 Corinthians says, But as God is true, our word toward you was not yea or nay. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among us by among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timothy, was not yea and nay, but was in him yea. Yes. For the promises of God in him are yea, yes. and in him amen, for the glory of God by us. Verse 21. Now he which established us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God, who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of his spirit in our hearts. Now I'm going to read from the amplified version of the Bible and, and it adds a little bit more to this, but it also gives a little more clarity. The same settings of scriptures we just read, here it is in the amplified. It says, but as surely as God is faithful, says, our message to you was not yes and no at the same time. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me, Silvanus, and Timothy, was not yes and no, but was proved to be yes in him. Mm -hmm. True and faithful and divine yes, affirming God's promises. Mm -hmm. Verse 20. For as many as you are promised of God in Christ, they are all answered yes. So through him, we say our amen to the glory of God. Amen. Verse 21. Now it is God who established and confirms us in a joint fellowship with you in Christ, who have anointed us, empowering us with the gifts of the Spirit. Verse 22, it is he who hath also put his seal, everybody say his seal. His seal. His seal on us. That is, he has appropriated us and certified us as his mm. and has given us the Holy Spirit in our hearts as his pledge like a security deposit 
to guarantee the fulfillment of his promise of eternal life. Glory to God. Everybody say praise God. Praise the Lord. I'm going to talk to you today about the promises of God. Everybody say the promises of God. The promises of God. I hate to think where we would be if God was a liar like men are. And I say men meaning mankind. Men fail to keep their promises. We do it all the time. It's, it's a common thing where we say, I make a promise to you. I promise to do this. I promise to do that. And then we fail to keep those promises. But God, who is not man, that he can lie, has never failed to keep his promises. That's right. He says, if you will, I will. Mm -hmm. If you'll do this, then I will do this. I promise you that I will do that. And then we just read it. And let me look at that. <coughs> Excuse me. That setting of scripture again. He's given us his Holy Spirit in our hearts as a pledge. Like a security deposit. To guarantee the fulfillment of promise of eternal life. In other words, if you understand what he's saying, he's given us the earnest just a little bit. He's given us a promise in showing us. When, when we receive of his spirit, when the evidence of the Holy Ghost coming in, his spirit in us, when that Holy Spirit comes inside of us and we speak with other tongues as the spirit gives yes. the utterance. It's God speaking through us saying, I now am showing you that I'm in you. Amen. How and when God that? comes in, he doesn't look for a back door to leave out of. No. You know, the, 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 there's an old song that says he didn't build his home in us to move away. He didn't lift us up to let us right. down. He does not make no. promises yeah. and then say, yeah. I knew you couldn't keep it, so I'm leaving. Oh, no, Jesus. He He's promised What's had a man say that, you know, when we sin willfully, God takes his spirit from us. That contradicts the word of God. God does not take his spirit from us. Matter of fact, he leaves his spirit there to convict us and to help us to turn back from the things that we know are bad. We need to go back to the things of God. We need to keep our promises to God. Yes, keep and I'm going to you know, be transparent, as I often am, that you know, often we will make promises to God, especially when we're in situations where we think we have to barter with God. There's no bartering with God. Yes. God said, if you have faith of the grain of the size of a mustard seed, yes. you can see, say to the mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea, and it will happen. That's right. But because our natural eyes don't see it immediately, we automatically assume, well, God lied. He didn't keep his promise. No, we have to have the faith to believe that he is moving yes. that mountain. He is moving. He didn't say it's going to blink and you're going to blink and it's going to happen. A lot of times he's saying, look, you say, uh, you say to the mountain, be thou removed, and I'll move it. Yes. The Bible talks about can you make straight that which is crooked. In other words, you can't. If something's crooked, it's crooked. But God That's can right. make it straight. That's he right. goes before you and makes the crooked path That's straight. Right. Our God has made promises from the beginning. Amen. The very first promise he made was when Adam and Eve failed in the garden. And he said, I promise you, Satan, that this woman is going to have a seed, and that seed is going to bruise your head. Yeah, you're going to bruise its heel. But why it's stopping on your head, you're going to bruise its heel. In other words, the seed of the woman was the first promise from God about a Savior, a, a coming Savior of, of mankind. And that Savior is Christ the Lord. And when God makes promises, he can't break those promises. If he says, I will do it, I will do it. He will fulfill his promises. Mm -hmm. And so often we have to look back to, to see the things that God has done in our life and the things he's done in others' lives and say, well, there's the fulfillment of those promises. And, and it's just like today. I, I, I marvel. I, I don't know about the rest of you, but one of the things I marvel at is Especially on Facebook, I've noticed this. That, you know, I'm friends with people of Israel, and and I've noticed that it's saying this country's now uh, moving its embassy to Jerusalem, and this country's moving its embassy, and, and this country has established a, a fellowship with Israel that has hated Israel all these years. All these countries are suddenly becoming friends with Israel. And nobody thinks anything about it. Just bad. Yeah, it's just the way it is. Well, it's not just the way it is because there are people 
that have ulterior motives in their friendships. They're looking to make the people of Israel be at ease so that they can do things. But God said, I will bless them that bless you. Yes. And I will curse them that curse you. He said that to Abraham, talking about his seed, which is the children of Israel. Oh, and another promise that God made is he said, Abraham, every place your foot has stepped on mm -hmm. is yours Hallelujah. and your seed after. So when Benjamin Netanyahu sits there and says, Israel and Jerusalem is the capital of Israel forever. He's not saying that based on his authority. He's saying that because God, God said yes. it is so. End of subject. If God makes a statement, if God makes a promise, it's forever settled. Yes, on God's authority. Amen. There is no yay and amen uh, to change what God has said is going to happen. For instance, and I like to use this example, gravity is something that God said into existence. You can sit there and say, I don't believe in gravity. That's fine. You can deny gravity, but it exists. If you go climb up a tree and jump out of that tree, you're going to fall. You're going to get hurt if not severely hurt. God made promises. He said, I'm going to keep you here. I'm going to, I'm going to hold you onto this earth because the, the way the, the earth is spinning and the, on its axis around the sun and the speed it's going, it's only God that's keeping us here. Right. I often Thank use you, the Jesus. example of the fact that the when you're driving down the highway, you don't think about the fact that, you know, oh, okay, the car's driving 70 miles an hour, but I'm not. No, you are traveling at 70 miles an hour. Right. And if that car suddenly comes to a stop, you don't stop with the car. That's what the seat belts are for. It tries to make you stop with the car, but your body wants to continue moving forward. And so when you think about the, the what God said in order, the way God did things, and the way he put this world into existence, and he said, I said it, and it's settled. It's done. That's right. Our God keeps his promises. Amen. For our God does not say yes and no, but he says yes. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. I love the, the scripture that says that Jesus said, the, the church, everybody say, I'm part of that. I'm part of that. When you say, I'm part of the church, the Bible says that you can bind on this earth and it's bound in heaven. If you loose on this earth, it is loosed in heaven. Amen. That is not saying that if you say the spirits of darkness are bound on this earth, so therefore they're bound in heaven. They were kicked out of heaven. <laughs> yeah. So it's not that they're being bound in heaven. It's that the God who sits on the throne is saying, yes, amen. He's in agreement. You have no greater amen corner than the That's God of right. heaven. Hallelujah. When you say, God, I believe amen. that you said you could do this, and I believe you will do it because you are God. Amen. Amen. God made a promise to the children of Israel. He said, I'm going to give you this land, and he gave them that land. It took a little while because God has to prepare things. It's, it's his timing, not our timing. But if he makes a promise, it's going to happen. Amen. Amen. When he promised that he would die and rise again, he did. Just as he said. He, he prophesied that through the prophets of old before he ever came about as a man, before he ever robed himself in flesh. The God of heaven said, I'm going to walk among you. Yes. I'm going to heal I'm going to raise the dead. I'm going to open blind eyes. He said all those things. I love it when Jesus sits there and says, look, here's a, here's a perfect example. Jesus is in Nazareth. He's at the synagogue. He opens up the scriptures and reads from the book of Isaiah. And then he shuts the, the book and he hands it back and he sits down and everybody looks at it. And, they, and he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing of the word. Amen. In other words, what he said was, I'm coming to heal and to open blind eyes and set at liberty them that are captive. How God made that? a promise through Isaiah the prophet, and then Jesus Christ was a fulfillment of that promise. You see, the promises of God are yea and, and amen. amen. Yes, amen. yes, yes. Yes. And when we think about some of the promises that God has made to us. Amen. I'm going to move it on a more personal note. Thank you, Jesus. I still remember it as if it was yesterday, and it was 30-some years ago. Mm. But I remember going to a prayer meeting on a 
on a 7 o'clock nightly prayer meeting and Brother Morgans and I were the only two men in the whole building with the rest of the ladies as we were having our prayer meeting and, and it was downstairs at the Church in Liberty and Brother Morgans came over and prayed for me and I'd been praying about two different things. Two different things. Mm -hmm. I'd prayed, prayed, I'd fasted and I asked God, could you, would you please take care of this? And I believed he would. Brother Morgan came over and laid his big old hands on my forehead and prayed for me and I fell out on the floor and I heard him walking away praising God. And as he walked away, I heard another male say, my son, the things you've asked me to do, I will, I will do. Amen. I didn't recognize that voice. But I immediately opened my eyes to see what man was standing there talking to me. And there was no man. There was nobody. Brother Morgan's was at the other end of the room. And I knew his voice very, very clearly understood that it was not him. It was God speaking to me. Yes. And God had made a promise to me that he would do the two things that I'd asked him to do. Hallelujah. One of those things was that a young lady that I had been witnessing to would come to the knowledge and understanding and revelation of the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That she would be baptized in that name and have all her sins washed away. She'd be filled with his spirit yes. and speak with other tongues as the spirit gave the utterance. And guess what? She came that Sunday, got baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. The other thing that I'd asked for, it took three years. Three years of heights, of peaks, of yes, it's going to happen, and then deep valleys where it looked like it would never happen. And, and the whole time I would walk in and, and think, this is it, this is the day things are going to change. And, and because of circumstances beyond my control, they didn't change. My sister would look at me and say, why are you singing praises to your God when nothing happened like you thought it was going to happen? And I said, because God made a promise. Yeah. And when God makes a promise, he is going to fulfill yeah. that promise. There's no taking it back. Yeah. And he did. Amen. And I can still hear those words, my son. The things you've asked me to do, I will do. Hallelujah. See, God is not a man that he can lie. Amen. When God said to this, the, the uh, disciples just before he ascended up into heaven, after 40 days of showing himself to them as alive after his resurrection, after his passion, he'd been crucified, he'd been beaten and hung on a cross and died and then rose again after three days, just like he said, he promised. See, God can't lie. And he said, I'll rise again. I will come back from the dead. I am alive forevermore. And he said, see, touch my hands. And, and thrusting him to Thomas, he said, don't doubt anymore. Understand and know that I am the one that you saw crucified. I am the one that died, but I am alive forevermore. It's a promise. Mm -hmm. And he walks with him for 40 days and shows himself alive with many as the scriptures say, infallible proofs. In other words, there's no questioning it. And then he tells them, go wait in Jerusalem. Go to Jerusalem, wait there until you be filled with the promise from on high. Mm -hmm. And we just read about this. We just, we just read about it. He said, he's going to give you a seal. Too often people want to think about things in the natural that pertain to God. It doesn't work that way. God uses natural things to help us to understand. Like he says, let's travail upon a woman in birth. In other right. words, a woman has to go through quite a bit, but it's not yet. It's not yet. And then all of a sudden, it's, it's, I use the example when it talks to him about end times, because that's the example mm -hmm. he gives. He says, travail upon a woman in birth, so shall the coming of the Son of Man yes. be. He made it promise. And he said, I want you to understand how the promise is going to come about. There's going to be little tribulations, little trials, little struggles that you're going to go through, but it's not yet. My daughter-in-law used to, when she was uh, pregnant with my two grandsons, and we would go in there and, and they'd put those monitors on her, you know, monitoring, and she would tell jokes through contractions, you know, and you say, well, what's that got to do? What I'm talking about is as travail upon a woman. It, you know, we have contractions going on in this world today. We're seeing things coming about. And a lot of people are going, oh, it's just the normal stuff. But God has made a promise that he is going 
to fulfill. Yes. And when he made the promise, he said, you go to Jerusalem, you wait, you tarry there until you be filled with the promise, the seal. Yes. Of my spirit. Woo, hallelujah. The comforter. Why wouldn't you want it? I don't understand. Do I have to have the Holy Ghost? Yes. You want to have God's spirit inside of you. You Amen. want it. Why wouldn't you want it? Solomon didn't build that temple on top Why of Mount Moriah to say, well, I hope God inhabits it. Why he built the temple and then he said, let's sacrifice all the oxen and the sheep that we could. They, they, it was innumerable. He had to dedicate the, the courtyard of the temple in order to offer all the sacrifices because he had a purpose. He said, God, you promised that you would dwell among us if we would do this. I want you to dwell. Why wouldn't you want God dwelling inside of you? And so when God seals you, it's a seal. In other words, it's a, just like we just read. Let me read it again. And it's given us the Holy Spirit in our hearts as a pledge. Like a security deposit. Mm -hmm. In other words, he says, I believe so much in you. Right. That I'm going to put my spirit inside of you. It and that is. spirit is the seal, the adoption by which you say, Abba, Father. Amen. It's a promise. It's a promise. Thank you, Lord. So when we think about promises of God, God made promises to Abraham. He made promises to David. What did he say of David? He said, David, because it was in your heart to build me a temple, I'm going to make your house into a kingdom. I'm going to establish your kingdom forever. Yes. He said, there's not going to fail to, for you to have someone sitting on the throne forever. And we all know and understand that the bloodline of Christ came from the seed of David. And, and because he is the bloodline, he is forever king, eternally mortal, the yes. only wise God, our Savior. Amen. Ooh, Amen. And so when we understand that Jesus makes promises. And he said, go wait in Jerusalem and you're going to be filled. And the, the promise was fulfilled. When Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost, Pentecost is coming up in May. And, and if you you, you got to have your Pentecostal experience. It's not just a word. It's not just a phrase. Right, it's right. just not a feast. It's a, an experience. You have to have that experience in order to have the seal of adoption. Amen. The promise, the fulfillment of God's word. Amen. God said it. He said, there's going to come a time when I'm going to put my spirit inside yes. of you. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams upon your servants and my handmaidens will I pour out my spirit on that day. This is that. Hallelujah. So the disciples tarried and they waited and they were filled. They didn't even understand. that We, we have such a, a, a better understanding than they did. Mm -hmm. Of what was getting ready to happen. They're sitting there in an upper room going, we're waiting for this experience. And we don't know what it's going to entail. And all of a sudden, like a sound of a rushing mighty wind, oh, the yeah. spirit came into the house where they And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it set upon each other. Yes. And then they couldn't keep it inside. They went out into the streets. They rolled out into the highway. And they went out and the people started hearing and praising God. And then they said, these are all men are drunk. Because it seemed, you know. That's what's happened. They're drunk. They're acting like drunks. And if you've ever seen someone filled with the Holy Ghost, they do seem like they're drunk. Mm -hmm. But they're drunk with new wine, not a wine. But they're the ecstatic. <laughs> and the Bible tells us that Peter stood up with the other 11 and he said, these are not drunk, as you suppose, seeing it's but 9 o'clock in the morning. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Glory. In other words, Joel speaking by the mouth of God said, I'm going to pour out my spirit on your sons and daughters. My it's God. a promise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love the angels of God, too, how they... They're, they're messengers. They, they have to do what God tells them to do. If God sends them to do something, they're going to fulfill what they've been sent to do. And that the angels that saw Jesus go up into heaven, they said, the disciples are standing there looking up in the clouds. There he went. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden the angels appeared and said, why do you stand here looking up? Yeah. The same Jesus whom you saw leave will come again right. in like figure. That's a promise. It's a promise. It's a promise. promise from God, not from the angels of God. It's a promise that God gave through the angels to man. Mm -hmm. 
And he said, the same way you saw him cut or leave is the way he's going to come. And when the Lord comes again, and he is getting ready to come. Yes. It's a promise. Oh, yeah, those, those words that Jesus said, what did he say? He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Amen. That where I am, there you may be also. also. Yes. Hallelujah. In my Father's house are many mansions. Woo. If it were not so, Thank you, Jesus. I wouldn't have told you. In other words, he's saying, oh, I don't lie. Yes. If I tell you something, it's going to come to pass. Yes. It's a promise from God himself. That's right. And when God says, I'm going to do it, he's going to do it. Yes. And there's coming a day. It's coming quickly. When the Lord is going to come back. And when he comes back, there's going to be some people that are going to be sorely disappointed. Because they think of it, oh, it's going to be this way, it's going to be that way. No, it's going to be God's way. Mm -hmm. Because God is God. He is God alone. God there's none God. other like him. He said, I do it. I don't seek counsel. I love when God is speaking to Job and says, where were you? Boy, we think we can tell God. Okay, God, you made me some promises. Well, here's how I think you ought to fulfill those promises. How about you just wait on God to fulfill them the way he wants Amen. to fulfill them? Amen, yes, wait on God. Because his ways are always better than our Amen. ways. When you look at this saying the scripture, the apostle Paul writing to the church in Corinth, which was, the church had its problems, but what church doesn't have its problems? Mm -hmm. Humanity. We're human. You got people that want to have certain positions that, you know, they shouldn't, they shouldn't want those positions because they can't. If you can't sing, don't seek to sing. Right. If you can't speak publicly, don't seek to speak publicly. But you have a talent, at least one, that God has given right. you. Use Amen. that talent. Amen. God will bless it. Amen. But the, the Apostle Paul says, when Silvanus and Timothy and I were teaching you, we did not say yes and no in God. We said yes and amen. In other words, it's settled. Yea and amen. And he said, and that's the way God does things. When God makes promises, he keeps his promises. He keeps his promises. Amen. He said, if you'll trust me, if you'll, oh, oh, promises. Yeah, you know, well, we, we always uh, we always sing that song. It's an old song. Every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. Every promise in the book is mine. Every promise in the book. We sing it with such joy. Mm -hmm. But what you fail to realize is there are promises to the negative also. Mm -hmm. Amen. God said, "If you'll do this, then I will do this. But if you don't do this, then I will do this." This that's still a promise. Do you understand that? When the children of Israel came into the promised land, they walked in. He said, I want you to set up six tribes on this mountain and six tribes on this mountain. This six tribes are going to talk about the blessings of God over the children of Israel. And this six are going to talk about the negative if you don't do what I said to do. Right. They're both promises. Mm -hmm. He said, if you do what's right, he said, a thousand. One shall put a thousand to flight, and two shall put ten thousand to flight. And he said, But if you don't do what I say to do, you're going to run when nobody's chasing you. Wow. <coughs> Excuse me. So when you think about it, there are promises out there. How about this way? Pay your tithes. Yeah. So I don't normally talk about tithes and offering because the Bible says, Will a man rob God? If you don't pay your tithes and offering, you're not stealing from me. You're stealing from God. Right. And the Bible says that God said, I put holes in your pockets. I will take from that which you've planted and you're not going to get it because you don't trust me. Right. If you pay your tithes, he said, I'll bless the 90%. He said, I will do it. He said, Try, uh, uh, try me, test me. See if I will pour out wind from the windows of heaven blessings that cannot be Prove me. Mm -hmm. Prove me herewith. See, God's promises are yes mm -hmm. and yes. Prove me. We don't want the negative promises. No, we don't. But they still exist. They exist. When we say, I don't want to do, I don't believe that God would send anybody to hell. You're absolutely right. God will not send anyone to hell. You choose to, to go, go to hell. That's right. 
There's a meme out there on Facebook that I think people are finally getting the understanding and the revelation of the way things work in the kingdom of God. God, er, the, the, the meme says, hell is not full of people that reject, or that God rejected. It's full of people that rejected God. That's right. Amen. If you put your trust in God, his promises are yes. Mm. But if you reject God, you get all the blessings on the negative side. In other words, you can sit there and say, I don't choose to accept those. It does not change right. reality. Remember what I said about God in heaven said, if you bind on this earth, it's bound in heaven. If you loose on this earth, it is loose in heaven. If you bind a spirit of infirmity off of somebody on this earth, it doesn't mean that they're bound in heaven. It means that God in heaven is saying, yes, I agree. What greater amen corner do you have than the God of heaven that says yes, 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 and yes. Yes, 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 yes and yes. Amen. The promises of God. I am so grateful for God. Amen. That he said, if you will, I will. He said, if you will, keep my commandments. They're not, they're not suggestions, by the way. People want to sit there and say, well, I don't choose to believe this one. I don't choose to believe that one. That's, that's your choice. You're right. You have that choice. He does not force anybody to believe it. But it doesn't change the fact that he said, if you break one law, you're guilty, guilty of all of the, law. the law. You can't, well, I've never killed anybody. Yeah, but did you ever lie? Bring false witness. That's what lying is. Well, yes, everybody's lying. Exactly. So you've broken the law. And what, is, what happens to people that break the law? You know, it used to be that you could shake your hand mm -hmm. with somebody and say, I give my word, I give my promise. And that was an oath. It was, it, was, it was security. It was fulfillment. And then it came down to where, no, we've got to have a written contract. Now you, you find that uh, the contracts, if you ever try, <laughs> Verizon, T-Mobile, uh, any one of the, the cellular companies or how about, you know, they, they give you these contracts and, the, and you open it up and it says, uh, do you agree to everything this contract says? Nobody reads those. Not even the attorneys that wrote them. Because you, you don't understand it. It's written in such a way that you can never understand a contract. And then because it's meant to be broken. Contracts are meant to be broken. You're, you're, you know, but the promises of God are not meant to be broken. They're meant to be yes and amen. And now it's gotten where, you know, it used to be, of course, we are, we are a great Congress that thinks that we, uh, we work for them, but they work for us. Right. Our great Congress, now they don't even put their hands on Bibles, and if they do, it doesn't mean anything. Right. I swear to tell the, you know, I've been in court before and you, you, you put your left hand on the Bible, your right hand, you raise to heaven and you say, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me God. What God are you praying to? Because 